even though it's Fira, we don't uh, make a bracha shechiano, but uh, I do want to thank Hashem for bringing us to this time of making a haskala, of starting the study of a very, very important text, the Shar Habitochen of Cheves Halavaves of Rebbeinu Bechaye. This is a sefer that has brought strength and, and courage and hope to Jews, untold Jews, over, over generations and over centuries. Uh, the, the text is about a millennium old, and yet everything that it speaks about is still absolutely relevant and applicable to us in, in our day and age. Just a little bit of background before uh, we get into the text, and this is a text-based class. The background is uh, Rebbeinu Bechaya, first of all, should not be confused with another Rebbeinu Bechaya, a later Rebbeinu Bechaya. This is uh, Bechaya ibn Pekuda, and he lived in Spain, and he wrote in Arabic, in Judeo-Arabic. The Cheves Lavavis is written in, uh, in, in the Arabic of the time that the Jews spoke. And in fact, <clears throat> the translator of the Cheves Lavavis was the famous Ibn Tibun, the translator of, of Arabic, not to be confused with his son, who was also Ibn Tibun, uh, who was the translator of the Rambam's Arabic. Uh, the, the Ibn Tibun who translated the Chavis Lavavis from Arabic to Hebrew was the father of the Ibn Tibun who translated the Meira Hanavuchim of the Rambam from Arabic to, uh, to Hebrew. Um, the Chavis Lavavis addresses the issue that Judaism isn't just the ritual mitzvahs, meaning things like Shabbos observance or eating kosher or putting on tefillin. Many of the responsibilities that we have are duties of the heart. Cheves halavoves, literally, duties of the heart. In other words, ways that we're supposed to feel as Jews. And uh, Rebbeinu Bechaya composed this text in order to address this issue. There are Ten sha'orim, ten gates within Cheves Lavavis. And the Shara Betochen is Shara Ravi. It's the fourth gate. Betochen is a word that um, can be difficult to translate. Betochen means um, certainty or confidence. Another way to put it, though, is that it is trust. Trust as opposed to belief. The Rambam gives a mushal about the difference between trust and belief. He says that there are trees without fruit, but there are no fruits without trees. What's the difference? There are people who believe in God, if you ask them, is there a creator? Is there a God? Yes, of course there is. Philosophically, they're comfortable with that idea. How else did I get here? Of course. But then, practically speaking, on a day-to-day -day basis, how much does that belief inform their experience of life? How much emotionally are they congruent with that idea of, of faith? Mm, not, not so much. So there are people who have belief in God, but they don't have trust in him. However, if you'll see anyone who has trust in God, then certainly he also has belief in God. If he has trust in God, obviously he also believes that God exists. So that's the difference between the tree and the fruits. We don't want to just be trees that don't have fruits, meaning we believe in God as far as doctrine or dogma, you know, 13 principles of faith, these are the policies written on the wall. Of course I believe this. I'm a, I'm a religious Jew, right? No. We want to be trees that have fruits. The fruits mean our ability to cope 
our ability to deal, our ability to stand up to and weather the storm and the vicissitudes of life. In other words, what does it really mean to study and implement and, and begin to master the chayvah salavavis, the duties of the heart? Really what it means is there shouldn't be any distinction between a religious person and an emotionally healthy person. How can there be somebody who believes in God, believes in the obligations that were given at Sinai, who believes that we are ob obligated in, in mitzvahs, and at the same time um, doesn't have the emotional capacity to deal with the ups and downs of life? It's not... <laughs> I, I, I shouldn't say it's not possible, <laughs> but it shouldn't be possible. It shouldn't be possible because the chayvah salavavis, the duties of the heart, are every bit as, as, as essential to Judaism as tefillin and kashras and Shabbos and all of the, the, the religious duties, the, the ritual duties. So that's, that's a need that Rabbeinu Bechaya identified in his time. And it's a need that really exists in every time. This is something that uh, in each generation, we have uh, we've struggled, again, to learn the art of trust, of really trusting. So without further ado, let's begin. Shar Habitochin of the Cheves HaLavavis of Rebbeinu Bechayi. Shad HaBetochen, Shad HaRavi, the fourth gate. Babitochen al hu alikim yizbarich levadei. This is about having trust or placing one's trust in God alone. That's a very important qualifier there, as we will as we will learn. But it's not enough to trust in God and to hedge our bets and to trust in other things as well but to learn to place our trust exclusively in Hashem. Okay. Amr Mechaber says the compiler, the compiler, of course, being, being Rabbeinu Bechayim. Mibnei shekodim maimareinu bechiyav kabbalas avedis hu'alakim. Having discussed in the preceding gate the obligation to assume the service of God. Ra'isi lahavi achrav mashu tzarech yeisim mikol advarim laved ho alakim yisbarich. I think it's proper now to follow that with what is needed above all things by a servant of God. Vuhu, and that is, habitochin alav b'chol dvarav. Trust in him in all matters. It's also an important concept in all matters. Trust in Hashem is not compartmentalized. It's not that we have trust in Hashem when it comes to one area of our life, and then in other areas we say, oh, don't worry, Hashem, I've got this covered. You know, I'll take care of this one. There's a, there's a famous vort about why does the Gemara say, It's a terrible thing to say. I mean, the Rambam was a doctor. Why does it say, even the good doctors? So the word goes like this, that toiv, um, what's toiv? Toiv is the gematria 17, right? So tas is 9 and vav is 6, and uh, let's make sure the gematria works, right? That's 15, and the base is 2, okay? 17, okay, good. And just wanted to make sure I didn't have to eat a little bit more kugel to make the gematria work. At any rate, so toiv is 17. So a doctor might tell Hashem, hold on a second, Hashem, um, I'm going to damage Manasseh right now, but when I say, I don't want to bother you because I got this one. I, I myself am a doctor, right? So I, I got this one. Um, so the toiv, the doctor who, who, who davens Manasseh, and he, he believes in 17 of, of the 18 brachas because he thinks one of them is superfluous because he, he believes in his own acumen and his own skill. So that's worthy of legehenim. 
So we need to have trust in Hashem in all matters. We don't compartmentalize and we don't tell Hashem, you know, I'll let you into this part of my life, <clears throat> but this other area, you know, I, I'm going to retain some autonomy. <clears throat> you know, I don't, I don't necessarily want Hashem interfering with, uh, <laughs> with those areas. Ba'avor ma sheyesh bai mina toya liais hag doilais be inyan hat toira uve inyan ho oilam. For it is of great benefit. Be inyan hat toira uve inyan ho oilam. Right. That bitochin is uh, advantageous or important both in what he calls inyan hat toira, that means, that means spiritual affairs. And inyan ha'olam, inyan ha'olam means uh, you know uh, material things, mundane things. So it's not just in uh, the spiritual areas of life, but also in secular matters as well. of Okay, here are the benefits when it comes to Torah. Mehen among them, meaning there are more. Menuches nafshe. Among its benefits uh, regarding Torah is that he will have tranquility of soul in reliance on, on Hashem, like the servant who is bound to rely on his master. Because if he won't trust in Hashem, then automatically he's trusting in something else. Well, me, but, well, I don't know if in a, this year if people are interested in these kinds of things, but you know, there's a there's a yid, Bob Dylan, and uh, he one time he wrote a song, and uh, it was about you have to serve somebody. Um, and uh, he says, it, you, 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 it might be the devil, it might be the Lord, you got to serve somebody. You get out, you're going you're gonna to pick who you're going to serve. But everyone is an avid, and you're going to have an other, and you're going to have a master, so you're going to pick who's your master. And so, Lahavdil, there was a non Jewish singer, you might have heard of him, an obscure singer named John Lennon, and he hated that song. John Lennon was not a good guy. Um, how do I know he's not a good guy? Because uh, the biographers all say he was not a good guy. But, the, the, but beyond that, because he was the guy who, what was his big dream? Imagine, imagine what? There's no heaven, there's no hell, there's no God. Big atheist, a communist, you know, a Marxist. And uh, so John Lennon hated that song so much that he made a song. You guys can Google it afterwards. You didn't think you're going to get such juicy details in the Shara B'Tochen Shir. John Lennon was so upset that Bob Dylan said, you have to serve somebody. He made a song mocking Bob Dylan's song because it bothered him so much. And in the song, he says, you don't have to serve anyone. You serve yourself. Serve yourself. Okay. So that's, that's how healthy he was. At any rate. So, uh, Rebbeinu Bechaya says, that and Rabbeinu Bechaya never won a uh, a Nobel Prize in literature. Was it uh, what is it? Uh, Bob Dylan won for his lyrics, Nobel Prize. Okay, um, you know about the farmer during Shemitah last week. Parshas by Midbar, we had Shemitah. So there's a in 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 Israel, there's an Israeli farmer standing out in the in his farm. During Shemitah, so his, his neighbor some says, uh, "Slicha, doni, what are you doing? You know, it's Shemitah. You're not supposed to be farming." He says, "No, I'm just trying to win a Nobel Prize." He says, "Well, how are you winning a Nobel Prize standing outside here in your field?" He says, "Don't you know every year they award a Nobel Prize to someone who's outstanding in his field?" Okay. At any rate, so Rebbeinu Bechayi tells us that. Um, you need to believe in Hashem, because if you don't believe in Hashem, not believe, trust, trust in Hashem, then you're going to trust in something else. Hashem, And somebody who, who trusts in anything other than Hashem, who chooses a different master for himself, God forbid, 
Meisir hu elikim hashgachase me alav. Hashem removes his hashgacha from upon that person. And puts him in the hands of that which he trusted in. The year, and he becomes kemishenemar bay, like the person of whom it says in Yermio, that the Navi says, kishtaim royis asa ami. My nation did two bad things. Oisi azvu, neker mayim chayim. They abandoned me, the, the source of living water. They, they exchanged a freshwater spring to hew for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns, cracked cisterns that don't hold any water. In other words, they had it good and they traded something good for something worthless. Is the the famous uh, marshal about the, the Schwer and the Edom. There's this guy, he's this businessman, he has a son-in-law, and he decides it's time for the son-in-law, you know, he's sitting in Koylul, he's not really accomplishing much, and uh, he, he says, you know, it's time for you to go into business. So uh, he says, how do you do business? He says, I'm going to give you some money, and you're going to go buy some schreir, you buy merchandise, you go to Leipzig, you go to the fair, and then you come back, and then you, you try to make a profit. So um, he, he goes, and he comes back, and what does he have? He had a, a wagon full of toothpicks. So the Schwer says, what, what, what did you get? He says, I, I bought merchandise. He told me to buy merchandise. He says, but you got a whole wagon full of toothpicks. You, you, how many toothpicks can you sell already? I mean, toothpicks. I mean, the, the whole wagon. It'll take you years to move this many toothpicks. So he says, okay, I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm, I'm not good with business. The Schwer says, okay, listen, you're going to try it again. He gives him money again. He says, you go to the fair and you buy, some, buy something that people need, okay? Something that uh, people will buy. So uh, he comes back later and he has another wagon, a wagon full of Schreifreis, you know, ram's horns. And the Schwer says, and what did you do here? He says, I, uh, I bought something people need, right? Everyone, you need a Schreifer. It's a mitzvah. You got to have says, yeah, every shul, every community has one shoifer. You have a wagon of thousands of shoifers. <laughs> how, how many years would it take you to sell all of these shoifers? It's ridiculous. Again, you messed up. You know what? Forget it. Don't do business. I'm not giving you any more money. You fend for yourself now. I'm done with you. So now the shoifer is sitting there. He's got a wagon full of toothpicks. It would take years to unload. He's got a wagon full of shoifers which would also take years to unload. So he doesn't know what to do. So um, he has a couple of uh, friends who are, you know, wheeler dealer types, machers, and they, they, know how to, you know, they know how to make business. So he goes to these two guys, and he asks one of them, he says, here, could you take this wagon? He says, it's not, it's, it's very poor merchant. I mean, it's, 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 it's a wagon full of toothpicks. But go and make a deal, whatever you can get. Because at this point, it's, it's, the whole thing's a loss. But make a deal, whatever you can do, and, and I'll be happy. Unbeknownst to that guy, he turns to his other friend, who's also a wheeler dealer type, and he says, listen, I'm giving you a wagon load full of merchandise. It's a, but it's, 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 it's weak merchandise. So it's a, it's a wagon full of shoifres, thousands of shoifres. But, uh, you know, whatever, find somebody who's willing to trade you something for it. You know, make a deal. Whatever you can do, I'll be happy. So these two guys leave, and they go off. And uh, <laughs> wouldn't you know it, they bump into each other. And they don't know they're working for the same guy, for this schwer. So uh, one says, hey, I got merchandise. Uh, do you want to buy it? He says, well, I, I wouldn't buy it, but maybe I would trade you. He says, well, what would you trade? So the one guy says, I have Schaefer. So he says, I have toothpicks. Oh, okay, fine, let's trade. So they trade with each other, and they're feeling really good. Hey, the guy told us to go, you know, whatever you can get, I'll be happy. And uh, they traded, and they come back, and they come to this Schwer, and uh, he's confused because they, they came back with the same stuff he sent them with. So he can't figure it out. He's like, what, what's... What's going on here? You didn't trade it. Said, no, we, 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 we traded it. But you're coming back with the same stuff. Said, no, we're not, we're not coming back with the same stuff. We, we, we made it. We, 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 we traded. We did business. He can't figure it. And then he realizes, oh, 
hold on, the guy with the shoifers is standing in front of the toothpicks. The guy that I sent with the toothpicks is standing in front of the shoifers. And then he realizes, it hits him. They, tra they traded with each other. They traded. And once he realized they traded with each other, he starts laughing and laughing and laughing. He's cracking up. This is the funniest thing in the world. So he's cracking up. And his son-in-law was there. And his son-in-law says to him, he says, Schwer, I don't understand. When I bought the same merchandise that these guys traded for, you yelled at me. You were so upset. And these guys, they brought back the same stuff I brought back. And you're laughing like it's funny. I don't understand. What, what's the difference? So the Shver says to, to, to the Aiden, he says, listen, you, I gave you good money. And you traded good money for worthless merchandise. These guys, I gave them worthless merchandise, and they traded some worthless merchandise for other worthless merchandise. So it's funny. So what, what's the nimshal? The Abishter says, so this, 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 these, 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 these idol worshippers, they get sick of their idol, and they switch from one religion to another idolatrous religion. Okay, so whatever, they traded one worthless set of merchandise for another set of worthless merchandise. He says, but I gave you, the Ebishta says to the Yidin, I gave you Meker Maim Chayim. I gave you the, the source of the, the living wellsprings. I gave you the real thing. I gave you Torah. And that you're going to instead, you're going to go and dig up dirty cisterns, broken cisterns that don't even hold water. What a tragedy when you switch something of ultimate value for something of no value. So, Rabbeinu Bechaya says like this, By default, Hashem's on our side. Hashem's got our back. That's the default. You don't even have to do anything for that. That's just how it's set up. You were, the Shver gave you the money already. Okay, Hashem gave you the Mekir Mayim Chayim. You're already set up. But then what happens? You decide, you know what? Maybe the, the Ebishter doesn't have my back. Maybe he doesn't have my back in everything. Maybe it's not prudent to trust in him in all ways. So instead, we'll put our trust in someone or something else, either in part or in whole or whatever. And what happens then? Hashem says, fine. You want to believe in that thing? You want that thing to, to be your, your caretaker? And good, then that's that's how it's going to be for you. Then effectively, Hashem, and you have to understand, because Hashkocha Protis is still Hashkocha Protis. The Ebesh is still running the world. So the Chatz Vashalom say the Ebesh is not running the world because somebody chose to not have betochen. That, that can't be. What it means is the Ebesh will run the world, Hashkocha Protis, in such a way that it feels from your perspective, that you are now in the hands of whatever it is that you put your trust in. So the Ben Bechaya says, when you do that, when you decide to trust in someone or something else, you're switching something of invaluable, precious worth for something of, of no value. Let's, uh, let's continue here. And actually, he brings more psukim. He brings uh, from from Tehillim, Yamiru Eskvedim Besav Nisher Eichel Esav, and uh, they exchanged their glory, meaning Hashem, for the image of a bull that eats grass. That's talking about the Chet Egel, the sin of the golden calf. And Baruch Hagever uh, Sheivtach Ba Hashem. Now we're saying it in the positive way, and this is from the end of benching. You might recognize it. Blessed is the man who places his trust in Hashem. Hashem Hashem will be his trust. In other words, it's midah uh, kenegin midah. It is cause and effect. He decides to tr trust Hashem, and Hashem is his trust. It works out for him. The Amr. And it says, again, quoting another Pasuk, Ashre Ageva Hashem Sam Hashem Miftachai, Vlifona El Rahavim, Vishate Chazov. Blessed is or happy is the man who places his trust in Hashem and does not turn toward the haughty ones, the arrogant ones that stray after falsehood. The Amr, and it also says, Ara Ageva, cursed is the man, Ashe Yiftach Ba Adam, who trusts. In a man, the psalm, 
and uh, he makes flesh his strength while his heart turns away from Hashem. So that is uh, the first paragraph or first uh, simon of the first chapter in Cheves Lavaves. This is a 30-minute uh, share, so we're going to wrap up here. Uh, and in Merz Hashem, we're going to continue tomorrow night. We'll be doing this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 9.30 p.m., and uh, we'll go until we finish uh, Shara B'Tachan. If people have questions they want to send in after this year, please, uh, you can send them in. You can, uh, you can email them. You can email to rabbi at soulwords.org. Okay, we'll see everybody tomorrow night. Thank you so much.